It's been over 30 years since the United States accomplished the astounding feat of landing a man on the moon. But for some as yet unknown reason, American manned space exploration has been all but junked. Instead of returning to the moon and building bases or going on to Mars to find out what's there, we're confined to low Earth orbit, operating essentially a trucking company called the Shuttle, while an entire solar system beckons. How could the futurists have been so wrong? In the same 30 years, technology has taken us from this to this. Communication technology has done away with the tether while computers have opened up undreamed of possibilities, putting computer power at virtually everyone's fingertips. But today's space program uses essentially the same technology developed for the Viking program 30 years ago. NASA's Sidonia discovery in 76, and it's now obvious 20 years suppression, had a profound if negative influence on the direction, if not the pace, of the entire space program. To those behind the program, the presence of a human face on the surface of a nearby planet immediately seemed to imply the chilling scene of alien intervention. Could that be the answer? Was the development of space technology deliberately impeded for fear of the discovery of alien artifacts? Or had someone already decided the artifact had been found and they were simply implementing policy? Clear back in 1959, NASA had commissioned a study by the prestigious Brookings Institute entitled innocuously proposed studies on the implications of peaceful space activities for human affairs given all the activities surrounding the sudden appearance of dozens of UFO sightings over the preceding 10 years it is perhaps not too surprising that this study included a section entitled implications of a discovery of extraterrestrial life in this section of the 264-page document, Brookings experts advise NASA that, quote, cosmologists and astronomers think it quite likely that there is intelligent life in many solar systems, and astonishingly concluded that, quote, artifacts left at some point in time by these life forms might possibly be discovered through our own space activities on the Moon, Mars, or Venus. They went on to point out, long before Arthur C. Clarke put words in the mouth of his futuristic space administrator, the grave potential for social dislocation and cultural shock should this be prematurely disclosed. In fact, they recommended strongly total suppression of this information. But the question still remained, was this indeed an artifact or just an interesting anomaly? Hoagland and his team attacked the work with vigor. The photographs had shown more than just the face. There were other structures nearby that seemed to suggest an artificial construction. Could there be an answer to the complex geometry the Mars mission had begun to develop around these nearby structures? Maybe there's a connection. Maybe the face of Sidonia is half man, half something else. First, they copied the left half of the Sidonia head, made a mirror image of it, and pasted it onto the other side. The results were interesting, but inconclusive. However, when they tried the same thing with the right half, flipped it over and matched it up on the left side, the result was a clear image of a lion. Are these merely strange optical illusions? Or are they the key to understanding the real truth about a connection between Earth and Mars? Surely it's possible that mere coincidence could account for this seemingly mysterious connection. But what was needed was some sort of scientific proof. Here in southwest England, the man-made mountain of Silbury Hill has loomed over the horizon since time immemorial. Nearby is Avebury, another megalithic monument believed to be thousands of years old, with an eroding earthen wall preserving an inner circle of partially preserved ancient standing stones. The area also contains an amazing connection to the structures at Sidonia. The connection here was determined not by simple observation or even supposition, but was founded on the plain facts of geometry. The question was, what if these ancient monuments in England corresponded in size, shape, and dimension to a set of geometric features on a plain called Sidonia? What if Abury Circle in England 
was in fact intended to represent, to be an analog of the crater at Sidonia. And Silbury Hill, a few miles to the south, came to represent the Tholus at Sidonia on Mars. The angles and positions of these ancient features, including where the cliff would be, where the tetrahedral pyramid seems to lie, and this specific angle interconnecting them both, the infamous 19.5, all seem to match, including the very size of Silbury Hill in terms of its exterior moat with reference to the Tholus. It was at this point that we began to worry less about the ultimate reality of the face on Mars and more about the meaning and the message of Sidonia. But could there be more to this message than even Hoagland and his team imagined? More than just a scientific message? Could it be that the pyramids of Egypt and the pyramids of Sidonia share a common biblical tribute to the creator of the universe?